So before we talk about what is Docker, it is important to understand what problem we are trying to solve here. Now, as a software developer, what is your job? We are, our job here is to build application which millions of people go, are going to use and then they can use it from anywhere. And nowadays, we make sure that you are building the web applications which are deployed on the cloud so that others can use it. Now, question is how you do it. Now, first of all, you write the code and then you make sure that you connect with database and then you also test your project. You do a lot of configuration and then you are done, right? Now, everything what you're doing now, you are doing on your own machine and then it's working fine. And sometimes when it works, you feel very happy. And that point, let's say if you're working with your team, of course, you have to give your project to your team. Now, what may go wrong there? The thing is, when you give your project to your team, they need to do all the things. Now, when I say all the things, what exactly I mean? I'm not saying they have to write the entire code by themselves now because you have written the code, but the configuration. Let's say if you want to make a web application, for that you need a server, a web server. So when you started working on your project, you have installed a web server. But what about database? So let's say if you're using MySQL or Postgres or MongoDB, you will be installing this software in your machine. And not just this, there are multiple configuration involved here. So what you do is when you started working on a project, of course, you will not complete the entire project in a week or a day. So it will take some time, right? Now, after doing all the hard work, now when you're giving this project to your colleague or maybe for testing, they have to do all this setup. And if one of the configuration is not matching, your project will not work. And they will complain, hey, you know, the project which you have worked on is not working. And then you will say, it works on my machine. I mean, that's a common phrase which we use, right? So basically, we have to make sure that when you are making a project which is working on your machine, should also work on their machine, okay? Now, maybe your colleagues or your friends will understand this, but what about the testing team? So in, normally in the companies, we have different teams for it, right? So we have a development team, testing team, ops team. So when you give this project to, for your testing team to test it, even they need to have the same configuration. So they have to install all the softwares, they have to do the setup, they will do the configuration as well. And if something is not working, again, they will blame you by saying, hey, it's not working on my machine. Now, even if you do all the configuration correctly, it might not work. It because it depends upon your underlying OS and hardware. Sometimes the features which you have used might not work on their OS. Maybe you're using Windows, they're using Mac or Linux it might not work. And then that's, that's only testing phase, right? What about production? So let's say if testing team was able to solve all the problem by talking to you, and now you're giving this project to the ops team. Now it is the responsibility of the ops team to deploy the project. Now they also need all the setup, all the configuration. I mean, they will do all, all this work. Additionally, when you talk about developer's machine, we are using a standalone laptops or, de or normal desktops, right? But in production, you use heavy softwares or heavy servers and they have different OS, it may happen that the project which you have built is not matching with their configuration. And again, there will be a thing like, okay, so you have given them the project on Friday and they will call you on Saturday to get this result. Okay, not a happy scenario, right? So how do we solve this problem? So the problem here is we want to make sure that when you build a project, you just don't give the project because they have to do all the setup. Of course, with the project, you will also give a guide, the manual, what are the softwares needed, what are the configuration, but then what if you can give them the working project? Of course, you are giving them the working project, but then you're not giving the setup. Now, how do you give the setup? Maybe you can just simply copy your C drive, right? So imagine this, you are not just giving them the setup. You are saying, okay, I have a C drive with me. I will just give you this C drive and your problem will be solved. So what they will do is they will use your C drive and they will start working because in your C drive, okay, when I say C drive, I'm talking about Windows where you have your OS in the C drive. It changes depending upon the people, but let's go for general scenario. Now, there are multiple problems with this. First of all, if you give your C drive what you will have. Second, can you really copy C drive if you want to do that? Of course, you cannot do that, right? You cannot simply copy an OS from one system and give it to the someone else. It will not work. So what are the other solutions we have? In fact, there's one more problem. What if they have a different OS altogether, which will not support your system or your hard drive, which you're giving? A lot of problems, right? So, and people used to do this, okay? So way back, people used to work in this fashion. They used to build a project and give the project to the testing team or the ops team where they will do all the setup, all the configuration and hell lot of process. Now we have to find a solution. Now what is a solution here? Now 
before Docker, of course, we are learning Docker here, right? But before Docker, Docker, Docker solved this problem, but then we'll talk about Docker later. But before Docker, we had one more solution, which is called virtualization. Okay, now what is virtualization and how it solves this problem that we'll see in the next video.